Welcome to a time to nourish your soul, a time to worship God. Can you keep your focus? I'm trying to count up how many different pens we have, particularly how many green pens we have, as some of you will understand. One, two, three, fourteen, four, five, six, twenty-eight, seven, what? Oh dear. One, two, three, four, five, six, Sixty-four. seven, eight. It's not sixty-four. Where was I? Nine, ten, eleven. Two hundred and thirty-nine. Mark! How difficult is it when you're trying to focus on something? Eighty-seven. Shush. How difficult is it when you're trying to focus on something and somebody keeps trying to distract you? It can be really difficult. Focus. Different things to focus on. How good are you at focusing? Can you work out what this is? When you just focus in too much on something, you can't really tell. And then as it comes out and you see bigger and bigger and your focus improves, it's at the Sea of Galilee. It's a boat inside a church and the communion table is a boat. How cool is that? A place Jesus went with his friends. So, how good are you at focusing? I've got some chocolate eggs here and we'll pop them in these white tubs. A uh, red one, green one, a blue one. We'll turn them over. And then maybe you can see, do you remember which is which? That's the blue, that's the green, that's the red. Okay, the red. The red's in there. See if you can focus always on the red and know which one it is as I muddle them up. So here we go, twist them round a wee bit. Let's see, are you one? Do you know which one's the red one is? I haven't a clue anymore. Let's see. Which do you think? Is it that one? That one? Or that one? Where's the red? First time. Excellent. That was green. That was blue. Did you know that? That was too easy then. If you got it right, let's try with five. A couple more chocolate eggs. I think there's an orange one and a pink one. So do you remember which is which? Orange. Pink. That's the red. Green. And blue. Red one. Okay, watching out, keep your eyes, keep focused always on the one containing the red. Are you looking the right way? Are you following? Which one might it be? Maybe we'll have some distractions coming in. Are you paying attention? How good are you? Focusing. Do you know which one's the red? I don't. Is it that one? Nope. Blue. And orange. Green. Two left. Which is it going to be? Pink. Oh, the very last one. Oh, no. It's red. There we are. Red one. We should just eat it. Mmm. Huh? That's good. And in fact, uncover the others. I'm going to eat them too. Back to the boat in the church at the Sea of Galilee. It can be hard to keep focused. Hard to know what's going on when there's so many distractions. Hard sometimes when you only see a small part to get the bigger picture. One way of keeping focused on God is to pray. Let's pray. God, give me a moment to be still, to listen for your voice in my heart. God, give me a moment to be still, to listen for your voice in my heart. God, give me a moment to be still, to listen for your voice in my heart. O King of Peace, give us your peace. Establish for us your peace and forgive our sins. Bless us all, purify our hearts, heal the sickness of our souls and of our bodies. We worship you, O Christ, with your good Father and the Holy Spirit, for you have come to save us. Have mercy on us. And we pray in the way Jesus taught us, our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name. 
your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Come and find the quiet center in the crowded life we lead. Find the room for hope to enter. Find the place where we are free. Clear the chaos and the clutter, clear our eyes that we can see. All the things that really matter, be at peace and simply be. Silence is a friend who claims us, cools the heat and slows the pace. God it is who speaks and names us, knows our being touches pain. Making space within our thinking Lifting shades to show the sun Raising courage when we're shrinking Finding scope for faith begun The Spirit let us travel open to each other's pain. Let our lives and fears unravel, celebrate the space we gain. There's a place for deepest dreaming There's a place for hearts to care In the Spirit's lively scheming There is always room to spare few weeks after Easter, Jesus' friends went fishing, and in the early morning they brought their catch ashore, and Jesus was waiting for them on the beach with fire already lit, and together they shared breakfast. Peter had let Jesus down badly on that awful night when Jesus was arrested, and now Jesus takes Peter aside for a chat. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But 
when you're old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Then he said to him, follow me. Three times Peter gets asked by Jesus, well, if I get asked three times the same question by my best pal, I feel he thinks I'm stupid. It's humiliating to be asked three times the question, the same one, is it not? But then good interviewers keep asking the same question all over. When, for example, politicians are avoiding a clear answer. There are interviewers who have made themselves a name for demanding clarity on behalf of us all. Oh, and how much that scrutiny is needed to beat corruption. But when Jesus asks Peter three times, maybe that is not about corruption, but about demanding a clear focus from Peter. Jesus is asking about love and care. So I guess Jesus is asking three times the same question in a loving and caring way. I reckon Jesus knows Peter well enough. Peter, who is quickly high and enthusiastic and says, yes, but for this question to get deeper into Peter, Jesus needs to go deeper by repeating the question. So when Peter gets asked first, do you love me? Take care of my sheep. He's like, oh yeah. Second time, do you love me? Take care of my sheep. Peter is like, well, yes. And third time, do you love me? Take care of my sheep. Peter is like, hmm, you really know what I'm like? Yes, you know. But I love you. From other stories, you know that Peter is so ready for jumping right in with both feet before thinking properly. That spontaneous impulse for life is good. But to fully get through to Peter, to anchor deep into him, Jesus needs his full focus. What Jesus wants here is not a snap reaction, but a firm and lasting commitment of an answer. Peter and Jesus together have been through so much already. Like 
walking on water and sinking. Like when Jesus expects to be persecuted and die, Peter tries to put Jesus off that direction, and yet Jesus persists against Peter's destruction. Like Peter announcing he would rather die for Jesus than leave him, but what he actually does is run away and even deny three times knowing Jesus. And after all that, Jesus knows how to speak to Peter. So, three times it is to get through to Peter, make him focus, making him commit deep in his heart to love Jesus and to take care of Jesus' followers. Jesus here refers to his followers first as lambs to look after, and then sheep. So lambs for young followers and sheep for mature followers. And then Jesus talks about being young as being ready to go anywhere. And then about being old as your choices getting limited, needing help and having to be led to places. Maybe a prophecy on Peter's death as a martyr persecuted for his faith. But I think it may also mean that Jesus' love is for all generations. They get fondly called lambs and sheep, young and old and in between people. And as Peter loves Jesus, Jesus wants Peter to care for all generations. How do the needs and preferences of young people shape life today, church life today? How can younger generations be central to decision-making? Is there an urgent rush to make space for the future? How can we care? How will church be relevant to this generation? Well, this was asking more than three times. To get focus, do we care enough? Peter turned and saw that the disciple whom Jesus loved was following them. This was the one who'd leaned back against Jesus at the supper and had said, Lord, who is going to betray you? When Peter saw him, he asked, Lord, what about him? Jesus answered, if I want him to remain alive until I return, what is that to you? You must follow me. Because of this, the rumour spread among the believers that this disciple would not die. But Jesus didn't say that he wouldn't die. He only said, if I want him to remain alive until I return, what is that to you? This is the disciple who testifies these things and who wrote them down. We know that his testimony is true. Jesus did many other things as well. If every one of them were written down, I suppose that the whole world would not have room for the books that would be written. Climate change and mental health are issues which are very important to young people today. Our Bible text was set at the shore and no one can take stable shores for granted as sea levels rise, coral reefs die and storms get stronger. The old mentality of defeating nature has led to destruction like climate change. So today we must all think of living within nature as a humble part of creation. Climate change is a big issue that everyone needs to engage with. And mental health? Society puts so much pressure on people to compare themselves to others, compete on gadgets and looks. And this can be really bad for people comparing themselves against others. Can I match up to what they have? Do I look as good as them? But even more for our young people is the whole question of the future. Is there a future for our planet? Is there a future for me? Will there be peace? Can there be prosperity? We have lived through a period of hope with the ending of the Cold War, relative peace in Europe at least, where life expectancy and opportunity has increased and big advances in health. And we thought it would last forever. 
so perhaps didn't care very much anymore. And now it's all gone backwards, for our young people in particular. Life expectancy, living standards, opportunities to live, work, study abroad, the chance to get the housing ladder, and then things like debt, war, climate change. They're the ones that are going to have to cope with the consequences. And we wonder why they're anxious. What have we bequeathed them? We who've had it so good. We need to put our young people and their future back at the centre of our lives, in society and also in the church. If we think our faith is important to us, what keeps us going through good and bad times, then we need to pass that on in a way that works. Not keep it for ourselves as a comfort as we grow older. Focus. That's what this service is about. Our focus must be on Jesus and what he teaches us and how much he loves us, all of us. It's that love and grasping that we are loved that enables us to do so much, to let go of our shackles and begin to trust. When we don't need faith as something we cling to, desperately perhaps, but something that makes us grow as we are held by Christ. Three times, Jesus asked Peter, do you love me? That was all that really mattered for the future and for the present. Jesus had shown utterly how much he loved Peter. And now he needed Peter to grasp that and respond. Once you know you're loved, you can love others. Take care of my young lambs. Do you love me? Take care of my sheep. Three times until Peter is fully focused and not rushing on to the next thing. Do you love me? And only then, take care of my sheep, young and old. And then Jesus says, follow me. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long.
Let's pray. We pray for courageous political figures who maintain principles of honesty, accountability and service. But we also pray for those who live by lies, distraction and privilege. We pray for community-minded citizens, aware of responsibilities who steady the lives of those around them. But we also pray for fickle people who demand their own and often let down others. We pray for people solidly rooted within themselves, but also for all who are easily swayed by others. We pray for Christians and church people who desire to pass on the faith yet often stunned by the lack of response. But we also pray for the people of our time-poor materialistic society who yearn for spiritual well-being and focus. We pray for all who served Christ from childhood on and also for new followers finding faith in our times. We pray for people who have experience of hardship and illness, deepening their compassion, and we pray for people lucky with good health, but who struggle to grasp the trials that others go through, even for simple tasks. We pray for the grieving, struggling to put their lives together again. And for those who've not known sorrow, yet expect the sad to get over it quickly. We pray for the church, where it's vibrant and thriving, praying especially for Christians under persecution. And we pray also for the church in the Western world, losing its focus among many distractions. Now in a time of quiet, we bring you prayers for many people and situations known to us, some who have asked for our prayers. Most loving God, to journey with Christ is to focus, to live abundantly, to be rooted in your gracious love. Help us who have prayed for other people to recognise our own weaknesses and frailties and to trust your spirit to supply the help we need. For your purpose and praise. Amen.
Now we go to love and serve our Lord Jesus Christ. May the blessing of God the Creator, Christ the Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit be with you and those around you. Amen. Come and find the quiet center in the crowded life we lead. Find the room for hope to enter. Find the place where we are free. Clear the chaos and the clutter, clear our eyes that we can see. All the things that really matter, be at peace and simply be.